What is going on YouTube? Hayden back making another brand new crypto TV episode. In today's video, we are going to be looking at XRP, Ethereum, Bitcoin, as well as the S&P 500. Lots of very, 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 very important things to go over in today's episode. Obviously, as you guys know, yesterday was not necessarily the best day for cryptocurrency or the stock market. Um, almost immediately out after I put out my slightly bullish video, uh, markets literally dumped to the downside here, which is something that wasn't unexpected, honestly, and I'll go a little bit more more in depth about that. Don't attack me in the comments here. Uh, but we're also going to be looking at a few different articles I do have pulled up. One being uh, the recap in regards to Jerome Powell's kind of oh, smoothing out the possibilities of increasing interest rates and basically causing the original kind of spike to the upside here that happened uh, two days ago. I believe this was May 4th. So Thursday or uh, sorry, Wednesday. It happened Wednesday. And then Thursday, yesterday, we saw the dump to the downside here. I also have two articles I would like to show you guys. A, on a market watch here, which talks about why the Dow Jones actually uh, plunged a thousand points as of yesterday. You can see here, should I wait for stocks to sink lower? Here's what some pros are thinking. And then also an article which talks about a market strategist saying that stocks could gain eight to 15% from this point where we are right now. This article was literally put out today at 7.28 a.m., about an hour from the time I'm recording this video, an hour ago. And it says giving anxious investors a perfect opportunity to sell. So there's some very interesting things to talk about here. Lots of uncertainty is floating around within the markets, but I just want to show you guys why this drop was in no way, in no way uh, unpredictable. Uh, this was extremely predictable. We talked about these drops happening, and we also talked about why as a conservative trader here on you know the channel that we wait for Sunday night to close. I've been clarifying this every single day. Yay. Every single day. And if you want to, you know, argue with me, go and watch all my videos from this whole week or last week too. Every single week, we have been talking about the fact that we need the sideways consolidation to play out. And we need to see how this weekend's candle closes on XRP for us to determine the general direction to put in a long position or a short position for a long term move. Not the short-term trade that I was mentioning yesterday. I understand I did talk about a possibility of a short-term trade, which is why I literally said breakout confirmed because we were, you know, literally swinging outside. You could see on Ethereum and Bitcoin outside these uh, descending fractals here. Ethereum's descending fractal, we broke through it here, got clearly rejected off these major resistances here, and now we're back inside of it. So yes, obviously, if you made the trade yesterday, you know, we posted it on Patreon. We did get stopped out that's part of life. You know, these trades happen. Some of them we win, some of them we lose. Most of them we win, some of them we lose. Uh, but that's part of the game. You can't be straight up the entire time. I'm not a, you know, a mo fortune teller here. But um, I do want to talk and go over a lot of these things because like I said, we're waiting for the weekly candle to play out on XRP. The reason why we expect to see a lot of this consolidation here, a lot of the consolidation notice, and not just the streamline up just yet, is look really quickly at what happened the last time we were at at this level here. We saw exactly, and I literally mean exactly what we're seeing today in this week has is what was happening back in January and February here. So if anyone denies this, it's hard to, it's hard, it's a hard, you know, stand to take uh, because of the fact that what we're seeing right now is very much so similar to what we were seeing a couple months ago here. So I do expect to see this play out first. Once it continues to play out, once we get the confirmation of this weekend, then we'll know where to go from there to to make these profitable trades. Otherwise, guys, today's video is brought to us by One Inch. Uh, we haven't talked about One Inch here in a while, but uh, One Inch is actually a DEX aggregator, a decentralized aggregator, which basically pulls all the decentralized uh, exchanges into one and allows you to compare and trade and get the lowest fees here, uh, which is super cool. And also for people that use DEX exchanges here, uh, you guys are obviously being hit with gas fees on Ethereum, which is terrible. But what's super cool is One Inch is actually offering a program where they're going to be refunding and are currently refunding people's gas fees uh, by staking a certain crypto by staking their own cryptocurrency here. So we're going to be talking more about one inch um, at the end of today's video. So definitely stay tuned. It's honestly really cool. But um, with that being said, definitely make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and let's dive into today's episode. So guys, there's a lot I want to talk about. I guess I'll go over the cryptocurrencies first and then we'll kind of, you know, intertwine S&P 500 as I know that's why you guys are here to talk about uh, cryptos for the most part. But I do strongly believe that the S&P 500 is a massive factor uh, to determining where cryptocurrency is going to. I say this in every video and I stand by it that what's happening right now within both markets is 
almost identical. And I think a lot of this is being caused by the S&P. It's hard to say that, oh, yeah, with Bitcoin's moves like we're seeing now, that's what's causing the S&P to drop. I don't believe it here. So in regards to looking at these cryptos, top 10 cryptos, we're down. We got hit so hard yesterday. And it appears even though we're going back down to levels we were already at, it appears we did get hit pretty hard. You can see XRP is not in a bad scenario. Like we didn't break bearish. We didn't, you know, start a bear run, you know, a bearish downtrend here. That's not what happened here. We literally pulled back down to where we've been trading the past, you know, since the 30th, the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, you know, every single day in the past week, we're literally back down to the same starting point. So I'm not worried about this because it's been a consistent, constant pattern that's happened within crypto. Um, and that's what we're here to talk about here. So you can see, it's terrible. I mean, this just tells you it happens consistently. We get a lot of these, you know, dumps in the markets here, you know, month, you know, every few months, which is just a good buying opportunity. But you can see cryptos are down on average about 8%, which is a lot, 8.45%. Top 10 cryptos, Bitcoin's down 9 Ethereum's down 8 uh, where is it? XRP is down 5.8. Like we're getting hit hard. We are getting hit very, very, very hard. XRP trading at number six. You know, even with the SEC lawsuit going on, we're still trading at number six. That tells you something. We win the lawsuit. That's pretty crazy. But I'm um, talking about these other cryptos here. So why I'm not worried. Yes, I did mention yesterday. And I said this, and you can go back to yesterday's video and quote me on this. I said, if you want to trade moderate to aggressive and you don't have the patience to wait for Sunday, because a lot of people don't have the patience for that, conservative traders do. But if you don't have the patience to wait till Sunday, you can put in a possible trade as a moderate to aggressive scale, more risk, I said, with the possibilities of seeing the prices swing up to here and keeping a tight stop loss in case we dip lower. And obviously, that is exactly what happened. We dipped lower here, um, which is what it is. But now we're really just playing out what's going to happen come this weekend. I think today would be the last day we see this kind of consolidation. And then uh, Saturday and Sunday, probably not going to see much as the stock markets closed on the weekend. So I kind of think that the uh, crypto markets aren't going to see much trades on the weekend as well. But um, the reason is because looking at the weekly here, what we're dealing with right now is in regards to the fact that we're playing out a massive descending triangle. This is the bigger picture. I did not mean to do that. XRP. Let me just pull this up. And for those that don't or for those that want to know what I use, it's XRP to USD on the Bitfinex chart here. You can see, this is the biggest factor. Like, I just want to clarify, this is the main focal point of XRP trades. If you're into crypto, if you're into XRP specifically, this is what you need to focus on. And the reason is because this major descending triangle is going to determine the future of XRP when it does come time to break here. Now, as you guys can clearly tell, this is a descending triangle, a textbook descending triangle. I don't know what else needs to be said, but if you literally look up tech, uh, you know, descending triangle, you'll see it's exactly what's forming right now. And I just want to pull it up for you guys. This is a descending triangle. Sometimes they break bullish, sometimes they break bearish, but they typically swing in one of the directions, the size of the opening of the mouth here. You can see the mouth of the opening and then the breakout to the upside here. So it's really up for your discretion. And we'll get that confirmation when time comes that we do decide to break. But this is a clear descending triangle, clearly confirmed by the lower high formations consistently at the top here and the bottom support. So you'll notice here that we create these lower highs, but we fall to the same bottom support here. We have the same lows hitting the same bottom support every single time here. So really, as we're getting flattened inside and falling inside this descending triangle, we're filling out the gap here, and there's really not much time left for us to fill this in right here, and we're going to get an answer. Now, what I was waiting for, and I was showing you guys in the previous episode, yesterday's video, that consistently what tends to play out with XRP, and I'll go over it again, is just showing you guys where we're looking at right now and what we're dealing with currently. So in the past here, you can see this typically works in three week formations here. The first week sends us down to the bottom support the price floor. The second week confirms the, the direction, which you can see is closing above the support. The third week causes the breakout and you or the breakdown. And you can see moving forward here, the first candle is the uh, pull back down to the bottom support. The second week is the confirmation and direction. The third week confirms the bullish break. So because we closed above here, that ultimately implied the run to the upside here. So what we're looking at to play it safe with an XRP as a conservative trade is how do we close this? Because this candle is going to determine the future of XRP for right now. As you guys can see, which is in no way you know uh, a bad thing right now, because you can see we also had a bearish close, a red candle close, which then was followed by a beautiful run to the upside here. If we close 
Sunday night, and you can see there's only two days and 12 hours left. If we close this candle below this support, this price floor, there's going to be an immediate reaction, which the following week is probably going to continue to trend downwards. And we are going to see this panic dump that uh, is a possibility for these cryptocurrencies as well as for the S&P 500. But if we close where we currently are, if not higher, which is really only today and two days left, or today and Saturday and Sunday, then there's a big chance we're going to see the swing to the upside here. The other thing to consider is we are very low. Not only are we in uh, extreme fear and greed, you could see Bitcoin fear and greed index, we are extremely in the fear. Extreme fear is at 22, the lowest point we've been in weeks. It also shows signs that we could be at a bottom. And it's not just within the XRP. A lot of people are speculating that we could be seeing a bottom within the stock market too. But ideally, because we're at such a bottom support, this is like the rock bottom point that if broken through, we're going to see a major dump in price. If we hold though, because the weekly charts you can see are very close to being oversold, the daily charts are literally bottomed out on oversold. You can see we're holding on to dear life from here. And you can see the other cryptocurrencies are pretty much at the bottom. We're now back inside, which is hysterical. We're back inside, oop, not what I wanted to do. We're back inside the descending fractal, which is hysterical, clearly rejected off the top resistance for Ethereum here. We're now waiting again to fill this gap get the confirmation, which is a bullish bias, but to potentially see a run to the upside. Same thing goes with Bitcoin. So we're now going to continue this descending fractal here, playing this out until we get the bullish bias breakout, which could be affected by the S&P. Notice the S&P is not in a bad position right now. Yes, we are teeter-tottering on the bottom, but this is not like necessarily a place that we haven't been to. We've been at this level of support back in June of 2021. And back in uh, February, you can see February and March, we've been at these lows here. There's a clear resistance here, which is why I have it drawn out in green where we've used it as a support to bounce off of on uh, numerous occasions clear bounces you can see consistently where we've bounced off this three times in the past here which we confirmed it being a price floor as well as a resistance here you can see the problem is we've tried to break through it in the past here it doesn't typically happen immediately but we're looking for that breakout so you can see once again we're now filling in the gap here we did however break outside this descending fractal which is good but we're now caught up and intertwined within this support here so we really just need to get that confirmation above here as a conservative trader a buy-in confirmation as a conservative trader a buy-in confirmation would would have been if we closed above this resistance and then buy in because we would have expected to see the run to the upside. Now, really quickly, before I talk about one inch to cover these articles here, you can see we're once again still inside here. So there's a chance. Hopefully we don't break through this because if we fall below, we're going to see that last panic dump and it's going to send these uh, cryptos and the stock market spiraling down to like plummeting down to lows that we haven't been to, which would just send extreme fear and it'd also be a great buying opportunity. I did buy in yesterday at this level right here. So I currently have a lot of money invested into the stock market at levels at about 4,100. Um, I bought into more mutual funds to dollar cost average. I also bought into a Vesco QQQ uh, for the first time. So that's exciting here at extreme lows, which I also think are extremely oversold. But um, looking at these articles that I do want to pull up, you can see the reason we saw the run to the upside was basically in short, Jerome Powell said that he soothed markets with his comments, including when he said a 75 basis point hike was not currently under consideration. He said, well, we might not need the hike because the Fed raised interest rates by half a percent Wednesday. And he's basically saying that we're pretty much might have seen the inflation peak and we're now starting to come down. Inflation may have peaked, he says. There's some evidence of that. And if that's the case, then they don't need to be as aggressive or hiking the Fed rates, which would be a reason to see the market slightly recover. Now, what I'm excited to talk about is this article here. This article says that this market strategist says stocks could gain 8 to 15% from here, the current level that we're at, which I strongly believe because I do believe this is the bottom. We're basically near oversold. We're extremely undervalued here. This is where I would predict a run to happen. This is where I think a support and a swing to the upside would happen. Same thing with, you know, Bitcoin, same thing with Ethereum, same thing with the bottom on XRP to, to cause an 8 to 15% run. That's what I expect to happen here. So he says within the article here that the U.S. stocks had a huge decline yesterday, May 5th, and actually boost the odds of a strong rally beginning soon, even if it won't kick off a new leg of the bull market, which is expected. We don't think that the bull market is here yet, but we do believe in a recovery to the upside here. Hayes Martin, president of advisory from Market Extremes over the years, reported um, on Martin's predictions of market turning points, which overall have been impressive here. It says just a week ago that I checked in with Martin, who said that a strong counter trend rally in the 8 to 15% range could begin soon. And he reached out with midway through the trading session on May 5th to see if his projections had changed. And you can see here, Martin said the net effect of recent huge swings is to increase his confidence even more. That is 8 to 15% 
percent rally would begin soon. We're getting closer with today's action here. One reason for his increased optimism is bottom divergences, by which he means occasions in which the market as a whole is behaving stronger than would appear when focusing on the market averages alone. Bottom divergences have bullish significance, just as their opposite top divergences. When the market averages are painting an unjustifiably rosy picture, are bearish here. So he predicts a swing to the upside here, which I am also a strong believer in, and why I don't believe we're going to see markets just tumble to the downside. He says, don't get carried away if and when market rallies, it's most likely a counter trend rally within a bear market. I totally agree. Not the beginning of a new leg of a bull market. And that's the strongest point here. I also agree strongly with the way he predicts. I don't think I have time to talk about basically why we've plunged. It's not you know, relevant and we're running out of time here. But that is very much so what I do believe is very true. It's a counter leg in a bear market, which could see a small reversal up, followed by more trends either sideways or potentially swing lower. I don't think that's happening yet, but I do think a counter trend and a small leg up within a bear market, not the start of a bull market. Um, and that's within all the cryptos. Same thing with XRP here, same thing with Ethereum, Bitcoin, as well as the S&P. Otherwise, guys, I do want to talk more about One Inch with you. I want to give a huge shout out to One Inch for partnering with me to bring us today's episode. Now, as with all cryptocurrency projects, please remember to do your own research and never invest anything you are not comfortable with losing. All right, guys, so at this point, you should all be familiar with decentralized exchanges, and you would know that DEXs have their own perks compared to centralized exchanges. But what's even better than a DEX is called a DEX aggregator. Now, OneInch is just that, a DEX aggregator, and OneInch actually allows you to easily exchange your favorite DEXs simultaneously. Now, with their varied advantages over their centralized counterparts, named namely self-custody, enhanced stability, listing autonomy, and coin diversity, decentralized exchanges have become increasingly common among users. However, some of the big drawbacks come in the form of low liquidity with thin order books that lead to high slippage and costly cancellations of transactions. And at any given point across decentralized exchanges, prices and transaction fees can vary significantly. And rather than having to manually check and compare prices across exchanges, OneInch actually collects the real-time pricing data from various DEXs to allow traders to identify the optimal price across the market and capture the trading opportunity within a single platform. Now, some of the popular exchanges that OneInch aggregates data from are Uniswap, Paraswap, SushiSwap, OX, Kyber Network, and even Balancer. Now, OneInch Exchange is a DEX aggregator that is non-custodial and seeks to fix the thin order book and front-running problems. Now, what's cool is OneInch Exchange does not charge any fees for withdrawal, and as the exchange does not deposit the funds, there is no withdrawal or payments associated. Now, OneInch Exchange does not Levi any fees fees on the purchase, although the gas fees are applicable to the user, which I have some great news about. Now, as any transaction is done on the Ethereum network, all transactions involve the payment of gas charges. Now, the One Inch Foundation has made a decision to compensate gas costs to the One Inch DEX aggregator users. And the One Inch team was thrilled to announce that on September 1st, last year of 2021, the One Inch Foundation began the distribution of 10 million One Inch tokens as gas consumption refunds to users who will stake One Inch through the One Inch D app. Now, initially, the idea of such a gas refund program was proposed by the One Inch community members through the One Inch Network's governance forum, and the spent gas amount will be refunded in One Inch tokens on the first day of each subsequent month. And the One Inch Foundation has also developed a simple system. Now, to be eligible for monthly gas refunds, One Inch users need to stake One Inch for the whole period between the first swap in a month to be taken into consideration and the day of the gas refund distribution itself. Now, the amount of staked One Inch tokens is also important to them. Now, staking of 100 One Inch allows users to actually get 25% of a gas refund, Staking 1,000 One Inch gets you 50% of a gas refund. Staking 10,000 One Inch tokens gets you 75% refund. And staking 100,000 One Inch gets you 100% gas refund. Now, lastly, as usual, remember to take advantage of their referral program. And if you want to earn some passive income, check out their mobile app they have recently developed. So guys, also, if you want to save on gas fees or just save money, I definitely recommend the One Inch platform, which I've linked down in the description below. Otherwise, huge shout out to One Inch for partnering with me. And as always, make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Peace.